Thank you all for joining today. Thank you to our Facebook community for joining. We'll be starting in just a few seconds here. I see all of you jumping in, popping in the wine. So excited to have you guys here today with us and excited for this uh, C3 episode. Okay, great. Well, I'm going to go ahead and start to get started here. Good afternoon and welcome everyone. My name is Jasmine Alfonso. I'm the manager of city and community initiatives for the Elizabeth Dole Foundation. We're excited that you're able to join us today for our webinar series, The Caregiver Community Connection, C3, presented by the Elizabeth Dole Foundation and powered by our partners at the Wounded Warrior Project. Our goal is to bring military and veteran families, caregivers, engaging content on important topics and provide opportunities for peer connection and support. We're very pleased to have the US Department of Veterans Affairs join us as partners for this series as well. And a huge thanks to our partners at Comcast NBC Universal for their support of the Elizabeth Dole Foundation's Hidden Heroes Cities and Counties Program. Today's webinar, From Boots to Suits, will feature Kale Edgar, Senior Vice President, Military and Veteran, Sur Veteran Affairs at Comcast NBC Universal. Carol Edgar will share more about her story of serving in the Army, Army Reserve, and National Guard for more than 30 years. She served in a variety of command and staff positions. Um, and Carol will share more today about her passion about military and veteran families and caregivers while giving attendees a sneak peek into the newest initiatives she's working on with Comcast NBC Universal, including Internet Essentials. On today's episode, we will also learn why Carol decided to support the Elizabeth Dole Foundation's Hidden Heroes Cities and Counties program and how Comcast NBC Universal has become an innovative leader for veterans and caregivers. But before we get started, I wanted to let everyone know that this is a recorded broadcast. We will have a lot of information to cover today, but we will be taking questions at the end of the webinar. Be sure to submit any questions that you have using the Q&A box located in the Zoom control panel. I will be taking note of all the questions to get them answered live during the Q&A portion of today's programming. And as an added bonus, we'll be selecting four winners at the end of today's episode. Today's winners will receive a $25 Amazon gift card and a Wounded Warrior Project journal. For those of you who are joining Facebook Live through our Hidden Heroes Caregiver community page, welcome. Please submit any questions that you have by commenting on the video and a recording from today's webinar will be available and shared uh, with today's session via email. We will start today by sharing a clip from Sky Blossom, a documentary film focused on military and veteran caregivers, their families and children, created by Richard Louie, a journalist, news anchor for MSNBC and NBC News in collaboration with the Elizabeth Dole Foundation and Comcast NBC Universal. In preparation uh, for the premiere of this documentary, Carol and Carol Egbert and Richard Louie had a meaningful conversation on the effects of caregiving has on families, especially military children. I'm gonna share my screen here and show you a little clip and then we're gonna get started with our exciting interview with Carol. typically a family caregiver as I am for my father for the last six years, the average for folks like me caring for somebody in America is five years. But in military families, the average caregiving link, as you know, Carol, is 10 years. And so there's so much service that, that happens in military families. This just one of the points. Yeah, and Richard, I can certainly relate to that. Um, you know, there's been so much research done on elderly caregiving, but very little light brought to the challenges of our military caregivers. And you're going one step further and talking about the challenges our young people face as they also take care of parents and brothers and sisters. Right. So I'm just thrilled that you brought this other side to this story. And, you know, I have some personal experience here during my, my service in the military. 
I saw how vital our, our caregivers were. You know, as a commander going to Walter Reed, I would meet the families and I knew what they were going through. And then, uh, you know, after combat tours, my battle buddies who returned, I saw what they went through and right. what their caregivers have gone through. And it could be friends, it could be other military members, it could be family. So I had a personal look at the challenges of caregivers. But then also, you know, I suffered some combat wounds in Iraq and I never thought of myself as needing a caregiver. But when I returned, I'll be frank, I was pretty messed up. Not that I thought it, but luckily my children who were college age at the time and actually just graduating brought it to my attention and they actually got me to go to the VA for evaluation and for support and um, to get the benefits I'm entitled to. And when I say benefits, I mean medical care. And I also um, have taken care of those in my family. My husband suffers from Parkinson's. So I, I have helped him with some of his challenges as he goes through that. Yeah. But I just want to emphasize, young people can, can really make a difference in supporting family members. And I, I feel so fortunate that I had a family that could help me deal with what I came home with. Um, so I... Okay, great. It was just a little showcase from uh, Carol, which we're gonna get more into now. So now without further ado, I will be speaking with Carol Edgar and we will go on and learn a little bit more about her. Now, Carol, let me begin uh, today by talking about your support of the Hidden Heroes Cities and Counties program. For those that don't know, uh, Carol has been a huge support in this program and we'll get into a little more details from that throughout this episode. Um, but I wanted to talk about something, Carol, with you and I, when we were working together. When I first met you, you may not remember this, but you and I met at the American Warrior Partnership Conference in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, and I sat in the audience while you led a breakout session, and something you said that day really stuck with me. You said so often people say, thank you for your service, without ever asking you any questions about your service, whether it's what branch you served in, or, or just understanding your role that you play. So I wanted to begin today by first thanking you for your service, and then really learning more about your service and exactly telling us more about your role and what you actually did. So please go ahead, Carol. Uh, Jasmine, Jasmine, thank you so much for your introduction. And I'm so excited to be here with our great caregiver community. Um, and to refer back to what you said about, thank you for your service, that's a wonderful thing to do, but it just isn't enough. Um, one of my causes is let's lessen the civilian military divide. And one way to do that is thank you for your service. And can you tell me a little bit about what you did? And that small gesture will bring us all closer together and help us all understand one another. And that's exactly what the Dole Foundation is doing and what Richard Louie is doing and what so many others have dedicated their lives to. So I'm thrilled to partner with the Dole Foundation in helping us all lessen the signal divide. But when you think about it, if we think there's a signal divide between the military and the community, imagine, um, just ask anyone if they understand why military spouse unemployment is 26%, which is seven, uh, seven times more the national average. Most people would have no clue why that is. And they'll go one step further and ask folks about uh, wounded warriors. I'm sure most think that they're being cared for by the VA. And of course they are, but that doesn't cover all of their care. So understanding the challenges and the needs of our military caregivers and what that means to our communities, I think is essential. So thank you for asking me about my service. Um, I'll tell you just a little bit. It's a long journey, so it would take up this whole session if I went into everything. So I'll just touch on some fun stuff. Uh, I joined at 17 when the military was segregated by gender. I joined the WACS, the Women's Army Corps, where we were required to wear lipstick and always wear hose. And we didn't, weren't issued a rifle. We didn't do anything strenuous. We were um, 
encouraged to always look feminine. So that was pretty much my initial journey. I joined the band, which was absolutely wonderful. But we stay for a different reason. I joined coming from a family of eight kids so I could get the GI Bill and go on to college. Now, I think a lot of people join the military for what it will get them, but I think they stay understanding that it gives a lot back to our community. So um, I went on, um, I started as an enlisted person, went on as an officer. I went to officer candidate school. And that's when it really hit me that this is all about giving back. And that's also, as I said in the film there, where I learned so much about what our caregivers go through, what our wounded warriors go through, and how it, it is the responsibility of all of us to support the caregivers that are um, helping us take care of those who've given so much to the country. Um, so I think that's a very important part of my work. And now that I, I've left the military, it's just, it's an honor to continue to give back to those people uh, that are taking such good care of our wounded warriors. Well, thank you so much, Carol, for sharing and sharing a little bit about your service. Um, you touched a little bit about your experience about coming back from service and that transition. And we saw a little bit of this in the Sky Blossom clip, but would you mind sharing a little bit more with our community of what that was like for you coming back um, and what that experience was like for your family? Uh, yeah, thanks. And this isn't always easy for folks to talk about. I've gotten much better at it since, since partnering with you because you always ask me. Um, but yes, when I came back, I had, I had um, experienced um, a rocket attack on a vehicle I was in. There were several explosions. Um, many of the uh, passengers in the vehicle were wounded. I was knocked around the vehicle, back injury, head injury. Didn't think too much about it. I wasn't part of a unit. I was over there as a, what they call an augmentee. So you're kind of alone. So I got care and took some time and a lot of folks told me I didn't look quite right, but I just went on about my work. And it wasn't until I got home um, and it was my family that recognized I wasn't normal, <laughs> that my brain wasn't functioning the way it should and I didn't say the right things. and. I don't think I would have noticed it, um, but my family did. And it was my family, as I said in the film, that and it was my sister who made me go to the VA. I wouldn't have gone had she not gone with me. And I'm sure that's the experience for many of the caregivers out there. I truly am dependent on her having the courage to make me go. And it has made all the difference. I've received the care I need. I've received the support I need. I think my family understands it more. You know, you mentioned, uh, my husband was my caregiver, and I think a lot of times it isn't the spouse because the spouse is almost too close to the situation. I mean, granted, for very severe injuries, absolutely, but more subtle things that are going on, I think sometimes it is the children that notice it and that can bring it up. It's a little sensitive for a spouse to say, man, you don't sound like you're normal, Carol. Um, but for a child to say, mommy, what is it? I think it's a little bit different. Of course, mine weren't children, they're in college. Um, and so I really do appreciate what children do and what their role is in caregiving. And sometimes now when I kind of go off, I, I, I now have a tough time focusing and my kids have sort of a, a, a little signal to me to bring it on back, mom. They'll say, oh look, mom saw another squirrel, you know, where I just go off on a tangent. But they know to kind of help me at, at some of our family gatherings. And, and so I really appreciate what children as caregivers are doing for our wounded warriors. Thank you so much for sharing that with us, Carol. Uh, I know our community appreciates it. And I know every time, even though you get asked it a lot, we just really appreciate you um, being vulnerable and sharing that with us. Um, I, is this why you decided to uh, partner up with the Elizabeth Dole Foundation? Because your own experience with caregiving what led you to the foundation? And I know a little bit of this story myself, but I would love to hear the backstory of how you decided to start working with the foundations and specifically start supporting the Hidden Heroes Cities and Counties program. I, I think that goes back to that Civ Mill divide. Um, whatever any of us can do to help broaden an understanding of our military community, 
uh, I think it's our responsibility. So by working with the Dole Foundation, who, who was doing something very unique. I don't know of anybody else that was um, working with cities and communities and counties and bringing to the forefront the challenges of caregivers and of wounded warriors. So, you know, I saw that as an important um, purpose to join. And I think, I think just the fact that the Dole Foundation has put so much effort into that, it, it's an honor to be able to um, support that. I also, um, I also believe that we need to do what we can to support the employment of wounded warriors and caregivers. I think many of us think, you know, they don't need jobs, they're wounded, caregivers are too busy, but that's, that's also um, a misunderstanding. And so I also joined so that I could help bring attention to um, the need for employment for our wounded warriors, our military spouses, and our caregivers. Carol, you bring up a really good point when you talk about employment. Um, would you mind sharing a little bit more about what Comcast has done on the employment side? I know that you guys have made a lot of strides with trying to educate the community. As you mentioned, there is a divide with those who have served and those who haven't. So what has Comcast done on that side to kind of bridge that divide and focus on hiring? Um, th thanks for asking that because I think that was one of our first initiatives is to, you know, we pledged to hire X number of veterans by a certain time period. We, we went past that goal, but in order to do that, we had to build an understanding within our hiring community. When you look at a resume and try to understand what a military person did or is capable of, it can be a tough job for someone who doesn't understand the military. So we did a lot to just educate our own workforce. And we take it upon ourselves and we think of it as a responsibility to help other organizations. So we partnered with the Society for Human Resource Management and created a Veterans at Work Certificate Program, which helps non-military folks understand the military culture and the military skills that these folks bring to our company. Now, veterans is a little bit easier. Then we had to go to military spouses. Most people don't even understand kind of what a military spouse is or what their life is like. Um, you know, if, look at a resume of a military spouse. It wouldn't make it past the first screening because it'll show gaps in employment or if you got a job every time you moved, it would show that you couldn't hold a job, you just jumped jobs. Without understanding, it was due to military reassignment. So we had to do a lot of educating just on um, military spouses and some of their challenges. And despite these breaks in their um, employment or their changing jobs, that they bring quite a bit of talent and skill to our organization. So we started tracking and promoting the hiring of military spouses. Now, we've extended that now and we're working with our teams to look at how can we work with caregivers. So that's why we joined with the Miss McDole Foundation to, as we go into those cities, talk about the employment requirements of our caregivers and our wounded warriors. Thank you so much for sharing that, Carol. I'm actually remembering a story that you, you've told me and it was something about how there was a, a military caregiver that was actually working for you that you didn't know. And she came to you and said, you know, that she had to go to the VA and that had these types of appointments. And can you tell a little bit more about that story about what happened and how the caregiving aspect also when it comes to employment and understanding that flexibility and because she had you as a boss to go to, there was some understanding there for, for other employers, what she was going through and how long it takes to go to the VA and when you have to take them to an appointment it's just not familiar to a lot of people in hiring managers and in the workforce. Can you share a little bit about that story? Um, yes, I had forgotten that, um, but you're right. Caregiving is a big issue for our society as a whole. You know, elder care, child care, but we've addressed some of these needs and our, our medical community is much more flexible um, with civilian medical appointments. You know, you have the ability to hold them on Saturday or go to in the evening. But dealing with the VA, I love them dearly. They have done nothing but great things for me. Um, 
it's a whole nother um, challenge. They don't have Saturday hours usually or evening hours. And when you're told to go, you need to go. And if you miss your appointments, oftentimes that will impact your care or your benefits. So it was easy when um, a teammate said, hey, I take care of my father, a Vietnam vet. I easily understood when there's medical appointments at the VA and um, being able to work with her to come in early to make up that time, you know, to be totally flexible and understand the stress that taking care of a loved one, especially a veteran, um, the toll it takes on folks. So employers and supervisors, we need to understand that challenge and work together. Thank you so much, Carol, for sharing about that. We're about halfway through our interview, and I want to switch gears a little bit to talk a little in more detail about Comcast NBC Universal and what you all are doing there to support veterans, military service members, and caregivers. Um, I'll now show a, a little video here um, that kind of spotlights what Comcast is doing and some of the really innovative technology that you guys are working on. And in this video, it shows New Eyes, a virtual reality technology tool. Um, so I'm gonna share my screen quickly here and show you guys a really incredible video. I had to go blind to be able to see. Now that I'm blind, I, I listen to people. I was in the Army for 18 and a half years. I think it's an honor to serve this country. I started losing my vision almost three years ago due to the problems I suffered in the Gulf War. Right now, I have very low vision. You know, the thing I miss most is being able to see family. I don't quit. I had to learn how to even be blind. I went to the Blind Rehab Center and I met my wife there. She's another veteran and she's been blind for over 15 years. She teaches me something new every day. I just love being around him. We really do enjoy our quality time. We love to watch television together. When I first started going blind, I couldn't really make out anything on TV and I was thinking this is how I'm gonna have to watch TV uh, for the rest of my life. Accessibility. And then uh, Claudia introduced me to Comcast. Movies with video description. Video description on. A massive dinosaur foot stomps down into the mud. My name is Frank. I'm here from Comcast. Nice to meet you. We would like to bring you some new technology that will enhance your vision. Uh, do you happen to see anything right now? Wow. You can see me? That, I, yes, I can see, I can see your face. That is unbelievable. Oh, you're beautiful. And it's also going to enhance your video experience. What do you see? Well, he's uh, facing off with the Raptors. It's my granddaughter. I never thought I'd uh, see her face again. But just being able to see her, that, that means a lot. Technology really plays a, a big part in all of our lives. It's amazing and it helps us to be a whole lot more independent. Oh my God, I don't even know if I can put it into words. That is one of the best gifts I've ever received. Just wow. I mean, it's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. And I've seen that video before, and each time I'm just, I'm completely blown away um, of how powerful that is. And just, it shows what benefit could happen from if a company does something like that, like Comcast, and is innovative, 
and can change people's lives. Uh, there's so much happening with accessibility with Comcast. Can you share a little more with us about what this work that, that you're doing and what it means to you and what it means to your team at Comcast who is working on this? Um, well, I'm just so proud to work for a company that lives its values and that um, um, displays its values in actions. It's one thing to say accessibility is important. It's another thing to have a whole team that works on it. It's also important to have a team that brings those challenges to the forefront to make sure people understand what some of the challenges are our folks are um, taking. And, you know, we, we say that we bring the moments that matter to everyone, that um, we don't think people think of people as disabled. We think of them as differently abled. And I think that that makes a difference. So I'm just thrilled to work for a company and doing things like um, working with service connected disabilities, um, looking at James. I'm like you, I can't watch that without getting a few tears in my eyes. Can you imagine that moment? So as I said, um, we, we definitely value bringing moments to everyone and that includes um, anyone with um, needed uh, accessibilities or accommodations, just even uh, um, entertainment. You think, oh, why does it matter if people can watch TV or they can hear movies? Well, it does matter because that makes their lives more meaningful. So something as simple as our Xfinity remote, which is voice activated, so nobody needs the digital skills to be able to push tiny little buttons. They just say, show me all the movies with Tom Hanks. Um, and it's so much easier. I have seniors that tell me what a difference it makes if someone helps them with learning that that's even available. I also find lots of folks that don't know they have a voice remote um, that would do all those things for them. So we value and we're committed to finding all kinds of solutions. And since many of those occur in our uh, military community, that's certainly a top population. That's another reason we partnered with you. Oh, Carol, that's great. Thank you so much. I want to take a, a little pivot here because I think it would shock some people to know, just like what we're talking about with accessibility, some of the work that Comcast is doing um, outside of just providing internet and broadband. Um, let's talk about the COVID-19 pandemic and what we're currently facing right now. How has Comcast been on the forefront of this, um, not just in terms of internet and also for serving military and veteran families? Well, think about it. Um, broadband connection has become more crucial than ever. It's not just about entertainment anymore. It's about telemedicine and being able to work with the VA to bring telemedicine to those who need it most um, to ensure that um, broadband access is available to those. And we need to make sure that just like I said, a signal divide, that there isn't a digital divide that brings, brings that capability to some, but not to everyone. And that's one reason we focus so um, uh, constantly and with such um, loyalty to take care of those who can't afford broadband. So we created the Internet Essentials Program, and I know you're gonna send something out on that, but that brings low cost internet to um, low income families. For something like $10 a month, you can have broadband brought into your home. You also have um, access to the hotspots all around your community. And this allows us to bring the internet so that, think about it, our, our children are remote learning. How can they do that without internet access? Um, we have to work at home. How do we do that if there's three of us trying to get on one computer? So I think Comcast realizes that we are more critical now than ever. And so we have extended the internet essentials program so that the first 60 days are at no cost. Um, and that's extended through December. Uh, and I, so I think it's important that we let people know that that's out there um, and, and that everybody could get on. Now, I'll caveat that with, we need to be in the Comcast footprint. Um, where we don't have cable, we, we can't provide that. But I think that's an important thing to know. And another way we're supporting military families is um, that, that kids that are home right now, we have um, 
if you're in our footprint and have Xfinity, we have dedicated an entire channel lineup to educational programming by grade level. So it's all, um, it's all curated for grades K through 12. We use that, um, that channel to um, show the student veterans um, graduation ceremony all around the nation so that everybody could see the graduation ceremony. So we're trying to bring these resources to our military families and to all our communities. So it's over 2000 hours of uh, programming for our households. And these are free titles for our Xfinity uh, video customers and our children. So if you want to learn more, just go to um, corporate.comcast.com COVID-19. And I think we've also done a lot for our own employees to make sure they're set up to work from home, to make sure that they have the benefits they need should they come down with COVID. So I think we're trying to, or we are, um, walking the talk and giving as much back to our community as possible. And that includes our military community. Yes, that's, that's amazing, Carol. Thank you so much for sharing about that. And I know, um, so our community is aware, for the Hidden Heroes Cities and Counties program, the Internet Essentials is a really important tool that we share with all 154 of our cities and counties right. to make them aware that this is available uh, in their area. And for those that are in the Comcast footprint, there's so many that need internet now more than ever. And even before the pandemic, we had partnered with Comcast on this Internet Essentials initiative. But now more than ever, as Carol mentioned, it's so important that people have internet at home, whether it be schooling. I know I'm working at home and a lot more people are working at home. Um, so it's beyond just entertainment uh, and just watching uh, TV and whatnot. There's so much more that goes into it now. And we're so appreciative to Comcast. Mm -hmm and to have those tools. And I will say with our partnership, I was able to learn about the education tools too that are available on there. And my sister with my two nephews, they have Comcast, they're in Florida and they have been using those tools. Um, it's so difficult when you're trying to work from home as a parent, you're also trying to teach your child at home and then also provide them some educational entertainment so they're not just on Netflix all day. So having that option, was really great for them to, so that she can put them down to have a snack in front of the TV. And Lisa could be something educational with Comcast. And it's pretty great to have that. And there's so much content that's available on there. Um, Carol, I also wanted to ask you, I know uh, everybody is really trying to focus on what life is gonna look like after the pandemic. What are things that we can start to look forward to in 2021? Um, what does Comcast have if you can give us a little sneak peek of what you guys have going on, are there any initiatives you can share with us that you're focusing on for 2021 that you can share with our community? Uh, I think we're all beset with uncertainty. What will 2021 look like? And we're working very hard not to allow that to not plan anything. We're very excited about the Tokyo Olympics that was postponed until 2021. I'm bringing that to our communities. I don't know if you're aware that um, over all the last Olympics, we made sure that it was broadcast to our military families throughout the United States, whether they had a, a Comcast cable video channel or not, through streaming and through AFES, they were able to authenticate that they were a veteran and have access to all that um, Olympics content, which is so inspiring. Um, so I'm really proud that, that we have done that and think about bringing that to our military community. Um, also, just once again, um, pushing the envelope with accessibility, partnering with those that understand the challenges. Um, I think that's important and we will always value and pursue employment programs for unique populations in the military community. I'm talking about military spouses, caregivers, wounded warriors, the young population of veterans, those that are first termers and they get out at 21 and have never had a job. So be aware of what they've done for the last three years. Also, another one is student veterans. Understanding that student veterans are not your typical co-ed. You know, they've had jobs for the last 10 years, they're older, they have families, so they bring quite a bit to an organization. But if you don't understand student veterans, you'll just lump them in with your standard campus recruiting. So um, 
caregivers, student veterans, uh, young um, enlistees that are getting out after the first time, and then just being aware and building our military, what I call military acumen. So very excited about 2021. You, you just don't know what's gonna happen. I'd like to think we're all gonna to get together real soon and that we can continue great work that you're doing and continue our great partnership. Well, I hope so too, but that's great to know everything that's in, in the works and what's coming up. Um, I wanna talk a little bit about what we have done together. Um, a lot of people may not be aware of our partnership and what we've already accomplished. Um, we have created and launched a city-specific resource guide through the Hidden Hero Cities and Counties program. We created and launched Comcast-branded caregiver identification cards. We signed on over 154 Hidden Hero Cities and Counties to date. Um, and together, we've worked on a lot of different initiatives, including a toolkit for recruiting, training, retaining caregivers in the workforce, which we've talked about. Um, and through all of this, you know, Comcast has been at the spotlight of supporting this work and the community initiatives that we have done uh, have been tremendous and mean a lot to the Dole Caregiver Fellows and those caregivers that are able to work with their communities and create this grassroots movement of caregivers who are working with cities and counties on these caregiver supports and really helping them to understand the community. So the support that we've received from Comcast and what we've been able to accomplish together has been huge and it means so much to this community. And I know we've done a ton together, but I wanted to see if you could tell us like, what are some of the things you're most proud of so far that we've accomplished together in our partnership, recognizing there's still many more new initiatives and things to come in the future for the two partners? Well, I can tell you first and foremost, there's never been a place where I've seen so many caregivers together. That they are, as we say, hidden heroes. So one thing I've personally gotten out of this partnership is a better understanding of caregivers as a group. What an amazing bunch of accomplished, um, empathetic, uh, concerned, uh, and also just very polished in their own right, despite everything they have to do. Um, and also personally, I've learned a lot from talking to the wounded warriors that join us at many of our events. Um, one of the folks told me about a really cool pen that the VA can give you when you can't remember a darn thing. And you can speak into your pen and then you're able to recall everything that went on in that conversation. Now, I didn't know about that, but by hanging around with wounded warriors, I learned, I got much more comfortable with some of my own challenges. And I think at Comcast, we are across the nation in many, many communities in many, many states. So we, we reflect the communities where we live and work. And one, one part of that is understanding the military and the caregiver community. So that's one thing that I think has helped our company is that when we bring our regional leaders out to a community event, they get a better understanding of caregivers and wounded warriors, and then are much more likely to hire those folks and to get an understanding of some of the challenges, so that then perhaps our accessibility team will think about that and maybe develop other solutions. Um, so I, I just think the community's aspect is really what we believe in. Great things happen at the local level with leaders who take responsibility. And that's what I've seen with our caregivers, these just amazing people that have taken it on to not only care for their own individual that they're caring for, but also to care for their communities. And that's incredibly admirable. Absolutely, and we appreciate your support. And just to touch on that a little bit, from my own experience, I have worked at a lot of different nonprofits and I have never seen a community like the caregiver community. It's a very selfless community that will continually not want anybody to struggle the way they have. So if a caregiver themselves has struggled to find resources, they wanna make it better for the next caregiver. And it's this ripple effect within the caregiver movement um, that is involved in our Dole Caregiver Fellows, our Hidden Heroes Cities and Counties program, where they're really able to not only just advocate for themselves, but advocate for the next caregiver. And they built groups, they create summits. On top of being a caregiver, most of them 
every day. They don't get a break. But even regardless of that, they want to continue to help others and inspire our community. And I, I just find that super inspiring every single day to be able to work with each one of them and see what they're able to do in their communities um, and put everything else aside that they're doing to help out the next caregiver. So it's just great to see. And you're right, it is inspirational. I follow the Dole Foundation and their um, postings about caregivers and the profiles. And I'm always so impressed with the families and um, it is inspirational and it certainly makes my struggle seem very small in comparison. So I wanna thank them for being inspirational role models for many of us out here um, and for going forward and being public. It, that's not always easy, but it means a lot for those of us out here. And so it's just a great thing to partner and to promote. Absolutely. Um, so I wanted to mention one more thing. Uh, you may have saw yesterday was Bob Dole's birthday. Yes. Yes. And then next week is Senator Dole's birthday. Would you mind sharing with us when you first met uh, Senator Elizabeth Dole and what that was like for you? Um, any experience that you have with her? And then obviously their birthday's coming up, so feel free to send out a, a birthday shout out while you're at it. I, I certainly plan to. Well, <laughs> I'm not that much younger than Senator Dole, and so my memories of her go way back. You know, there weren't a lot of women role models when she stood up and took on the uh, Red Cross, uh, the Department of Transportation, um, uh, also as a senator. So I followed her just as a woman leader, and she's always been very inspirational. Um, but then to be able to personally get to know her a little bit better through the Dole Foundation talk about inspirational. How can someone with that intellect and that empathy be so thoughtful? How does she keep remember everybody? I have never seen her meet a person that she doesn't remember the last time she met them. Unless somebody has a little earpiece to her, I don't know how she does it, but it is the essence of kindness and awareness. So I always find it very inspirational. And the same thing with, with uh, Senator Dole. Um, I think at one point he saw my purple heart and he and I bonded immediately um, and we shared coins. And so there was an immediate connection as combat veterans. And he didn't, I could tell, he never even thought about, oh, I'm a woman and his time was in World War. He, it was just an immediate connection. What a gentleman, what a brilliant mind. Um, so much that they've both done for our country. So you can't help but be all inspired by those two. And yes, I will give a shout out and a happy birthday to both of them. And I'll even call up and give them a personal sing song just to um, recognize their birthday, but they are amazing people. Absolutely, yes. Um, it's, it's such an honor to even work for her. I, I'm still in awe that she even hired me and interviewed me. So <laughs> the fact that I get to know her all the time, is absolutely incredible. You brought up something I wanted to ask you before um, we close this out a little bit and get some questions from the audience about Senator Dole being uh, you know, an important woman in leadership in that position. And then I think about your career and what you've accomplished in the military and the corporate ladder that you have climbed. Do you have any advice for women in leadership of how you're able to get to these positions, what you've done, is there any type of advice that you can give to us and our caregiver community as you've accomplished so much in your military career as well as your career uh, with Comcast? Well, um, I'm sure Elizabeth Dole, Senator Dole would agree with this. It isn't about getting to a position. It isn't about, about the next rung on the ladder. Um, I'm a strong advocate for the corporate lattice where you go back and forth in different positions. It's all about finding positions where you can give the most to your organization, not about moving up. It's about giving back. And I know she believes that. And it's about supporting others who are trying to do the same thing. I love the Madeleine Albright, you know, quote, there's a special place in hell for women who don't help women. And certainly Elizabeth Dole is one of those women that reach out to everyone. Um, so I guess my advice would be don't think about getting to the next spot. Think about how to give back and to how to prepare yourself to be able to give more. And your 
caregiver community is the essence of that. They've all figured out how to give more back to their communities despite everything they're doing. So I'm a strong advocate for don't think about climbing the corporate ladder or how to get the next promotion. Think about how to give the most back to your organizations and your community. I think that's really, really great advice because so often we feel like to feel accomplished, you yes. have to have this title or this higher position, even though, uh, so it, it's nice to know we shouldn't just focus completely on that and really build something that we can be proud of. And that can make us a leader in our organization as well. Yes, and in your life and to your family. Because if, you've, if your self-worth has been based on everything you've done in your professional life, what in the heck happens when you retire? You, know, <laughs> you will look at yourself as nobody. Now, certainly Senator Dole has not done that, either one of them. So be intrinsically motivated, not extrinsically motivated by what other people say about you. I, I think that's incredible advice. And yes, she is still working and con constantly, she is an inspiration in that sense as well. When you see her working as hard as we did when we were in the office, you're like, wow, you can't even complain. She puts in the hours and the work and just seeing that is just makes you think as well, like where to value your own, your own self and yeah. how you can continue to grow within an organization. So I think that's really powerful and I appreciate that advice and I'm sure our community does as well. Well, Carol, we're going to take some questions, but I want to thank you so much uh, for sharing your story with us and for all the incredible work that you're doing at Comcast and what you continue to do for military and veterans and the caregiver community and your support of the Hidden Heroes Cities and Counties program. So we're going to go ahead and take a few questions, but before I do, I want to announce some of our prize winners here. Ooh. So I have Brenda Henderson, Laura Washington, Robert Pierre, and Walter Cheatham. I may be saying that wrong, so Walter, I apologize. So we are going to move to some questions here. And I saw a really good one that just came in here. Um, so here's the question for you, Carol. As a caregiver yourself for your husband who has Parkinson's, how have you been uh, how have you been coping with the pandemic? Are there things that are helping, things that are more challenging? Would love to hear about you and your family and how you're doing during this time. Well, I mean, this is kind of funny. We're very, very early in this journey. So much of my caregiving is really thinking about what's coming and how to prepare and anticipate the next steps. Right now, my husband doesn't really need caregiving, um, but there are things he needs to be doing. And I admire caregivers because uh, we all joke that I take the care out of caregiving because all I do is complain that why aren't you doing what you should do to make yourself well? Um, so I need to learn how to be a much more caring caregiver because it's gonna get harder. So I admire these um, partners and, and, and family members that can do that without feeling that internal frustration. Um, but I'll get there, I'll get there. Right now, we're, it's very early and we're very lucky and I just wanna focus on making the most of the moment. And also helping my kids with that. That's not easy either, which I'm sure your caregivers know. Absolutely, uh, thank you, Carol. So another question that came in is, what, let, what drew you to your service? Um, why did you want to enlist? What, did that come from something in your family? What in, inspired you to be able to do that? Well, I'd like to say it was an understanding of the greater good, something, something uh, very inspirational like that. But no, it was much more practical and much more based on self-interest. I wanted the GI Bill. Family of eight, not going to send everyone to college, although they've all gone. And I wanted to go somewhere different. You gotta do something different to be, um, you know, to stand out and have eight kids. So I joined the military to get the GI Bill and also to play my French horn, which I was no uh, protege. So um, that was a place to play the, the French horn and continue and to get some money to buy my own. So definitely not any um, high laudable reason for joining the service, but I will say it was to stay. I understood about what the service can do for others and how it can pull people out of that whole cycle of poverty or a lack of education. Um, and that's why I stayed. Now, of course, my father 
was a World War II veteran. Um, and, um, you know, you see that example, but I wouldn't say it was first and foremost in our family, although I always admired my father. He, in fact, told me, nice girls don't join the military. But he then became my latest, my greatest fan and was there when I was commissioned and my brother was there when I was promoted to general officer. And he was there when I was in private and finished basic training. So I couldn't have had more support. But yes, um, I don't think it's uncommon. You join for self-serving reasons and you stay for something bigger than yourself. Absolutely. Um, a similar question, what led you to Comcast? I can't imagine someone with your experience had a lot of different opportunities to go different places. Why Comcast and <laughs> Universal? Um, well, actually, when I left the service, uh, you know, I was 65 years old, 63. Um, I wasn't really looking for a job. Uh, I was doing some nonprofit work. But then I heard from Comcast that they wanted to stand up this team that would build a strategy to engage the military community. And when I went down to talk to them, I realized that they actually believed that. It wasn't, it wasn't just talk. It wasn't just, hey, let's tell everybody we're doing this. It was an actual belief in giving back and better understanding the military community. Comcast was founded by Ralph Roberts, a World War II veteran. Um, so they, they also walked the talk. And so I say I wasn't looking for a position, but I found a purpose. And the purpose was to continue to serve the military community in a different aspect, but with a company that truly believed in it and supported those efforts. And I haven't regretted a day since, well, maybe the three hour commute, but other than that. <laughs> well, that's great. Um, and you have a great team around you too. Like we, don't, uh, we don't get to really showcase on this webinar, but there is a wonderful team surrounding Carol that I'm lucky enough to get to work with. And they're just all so incredible in their own ways of what they contribute to your team. And I know they work super hard with all the stuff that you all are doing at Comcast to support veterans and military caregivers. So if they're listening to this today, we thank them as well for everything that they've been doing. Uh, Jasmine, a you are so right. I mean, work is so much easy when it's fun, so much easier when it's fun and effective. And that team, all with military experience, or as we mentioned, the one teammate being a caregiver. And then we have another teammate who comes from a military family. But they all understand that work ethic and they understand that what we're doing matters and can make a difference. They're also incredibly talented and so incredibly dedicated that it's certainly not me, it's the team that makes all this stuff happen. And if they're listening, I say this is a big shout out to the Military Veteran Affairs team. Yeah, absolutely. Um, another question here, what do you wanna do in the next chapter of your life, maybe after Comcast? Is there anything that's on the horizon for Carol that we should know about? Anything you're thinking about? I hope you're not leaving our partnership anytime soon, but what are you, anything coming up for us that you wanna share with our community that you've been thinking about? Well, um, you know, I, I not that I picked it up, but I earned a PhD at the age of 64, 63. And you might wonder why in the heck is anybody doing that? It was a lot of work and it was a tough journey. But um, I have done some adjunct uh, teaching at the university level. So I think I would like to do that, um, continue that. Also, I like writing, you know, after you get through a dissertation, you sort of have to enjoy writing, but it would be fun to write and maybe bring an understanding of some of these challenges to the general public. So I could see writing in my future. Ooh, well, we and will... maybe biking across the country, that's in there too somewhere. Oh, a biker too. Well, we... I am a cyclist, yes. Nice, well, I didn't know that about you. That's wonderful. Now I'm gonna expect to read your book and see there if, you go. See you in a, a, a biking race as well. Well, there you go. <laughs> Well, that's great. Well, that is all we have time for uh, with questions today. It looks like we covered all of them. Um, I just wanna say thank you again, Carol. Uh, it means so much to have you participate in today's C3 episode. We encourage everyone on today's webinar session to join our Facebook group, Hidden Heroes Caregiver Community. Um, 
it's just really important that you have that connection, that validation, understanding and support and those resources. So that's what HHCC is all about. So if you're uh, caring for a wounded, ill or injured service member or veteran, uh, become part of our community and, and see what Hidden Heroes is all about. Um, be on the lookout for the follow-up email from us that will include a recording of today's webinar and a link to join the Facebook group. Um, and then join us for our next webinar, which is going to be a uh, Texas focus. Uh, it's going to be Let's Talk About Texas, a virtual town hall supporting military and veteran caregivers in the community. And that's going to be next Tuesday, July 28th. Uh, that's going to be at 6 p.m. Eastern. Uh, thank you all for joining today. Uh, it means so much to us for you guys to join this community. And a big thanks to our partners at Wounded Warrior Project and the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs for supporting the C3 series. Um, we hope you found this session informative, inspirational, uh, and stay in touch with us and our caregiver community. And always remember, you are not alone. We hope you have a wonderful day. And thank you again, Carol, for being here today with us. We're so grateful to have your support in the foundation and beyond and excited for all the things to come with Comcast. Thank you so much. And, and thank you to the caregivers that are out there and everything they stand for. So thanks for having me. Great, thank you. Bye everybody. Bye-bye.